Welcome back to awesomehelp.com. Uh, in today's lesson, we are going to take a look at a problem regarding aggregate planning and developing an actual production plan and determining the cost for this production plan. Um, let's go ahead and just get started. Georgetown Brewing Company has a backlog of 250 barrels of Manny's Pale Ale at the end of December. Demand is expected to be 400 barrels in January, 500 barrels in February, and 550 barrels in March. So um, it looks like we're making our plan from January through March. So we're going to go ahead and um, start setting up our actual table. January, February. March, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and mark down demand, which for January is 400, for February we're looking at 500, and as mentioned 550 in March. <coughs> Each Georgetown worker can produce 50 barrels per month with regular wages costing the company $1,000 per worker per month. Hiring costs have been calculated, resulting in a cost of $2,500 per worker. Firing costs have been calculated, resulting in a cost of $5,000 per worker. Backlog costs have been determined to cost the company $25 per unit per month and there are no costs associated with carrying inventory. So we just read through a lot of information there, and um, it's worth noting some of the legends that we'll be working with, because the last sentence here, it asks us to develop a level production plan. That's going to be important of how we approach the problem. And determining the costs. So just kind of looking at the costs we just ran through, making a little bit of a legend will be nice as we work through regular costs or regular wages is um, $1,000 per worker per month. The next piece of information we were looking at was hiring costs. Costs is $2,500 per worker. And then firing costs are set. Just going to do costs, 5000 per worker. And then there was also a mention of the backlog cost, which backlog costs are um, $25 per unit per month. So that's just going to um, help clarify a little bit further into the problem of how we're going to calculate um, the costs of this plan. So we'll go back and look at the level production plan that it talks about. You'll have recognized earlier uh, in the aggregate planning chapter, there are a few different reactive um, aggregate planning methods and strategies that you can pursue as a manager. One of them being is a chase demand where the actual production level is going to match what your demand is for the period, in this case January, February, and March respectively. But a level production plan is going to have the same constant uh, output over a given period of time. 
And if we look at uh, the demand here, you're basically going to want to take the, the average of um, the total here. So 550 plus 500 plus 400 is going to give us a total of 1,450 uh, cases or barrels of beer that we're going to produce over the three months here. But there's also a very important piece of information in the problem that we need to add into our production plan because the company is already behind with a backlog of 250 barrels of Manny's Pale Ale. So in order to accomplish our production um, to meet demand as well as backlogs over this three month planning period, we're going to have to add that 250 barrels giving us a total of 1700. Now when we take a look at the production we're going to um, divide that up among those three periods. When we do 1700 divided by 3 we're looking at 567 barrels. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down for each. And now there's a little um, note that's going to help determine whether we have met demand for each period. We're going to do output minus forecast. And let me just demonstrate first what we're going to do, and then I'll um, help explain there. Output is our production. 567 barrels minus the demand of 400 leaves us with a positive 167 barrels. So at the end of January, Georgetown Brewing Company is going to have an inventory of uh, 167 units before touching any of the backlog units. So going to go ahead and write the next thing, beginning inventory, which we know is zero. Because if we had a backlog of orders and we had an inventory, we would have used that inventory to reduce the backlog. So we also know that ending inventory was zero for that period. And uh, Backlogs for December, we had 250. So if we have the 167 units in January before taking care of any of the backlog items, um, we'll notice that we're short 83 still. So we've reduced the backlog for January but there's still 83 units or 83 orders that have not been accommodated. So let's go ahead and look into the next month here. 567 units, which is output, minus demand. It's going to give us 67 units now. Beginning inventory is still zero because ending inventory, carrying that over to this month still going to be zero. And then that 67 units minus 83 is going to give us, again, a reduction in the number of backlogs, but we're still 16 uh, barrels short of meeting demand as well as the backlogs from December. But it looks like in March here, we should be able to meet that deficit. Um, hopefully, we'll see here. 567 units of production or output minus that demand leaves us with 17 additional units. Beginning inventory, again, still zero. 
ending inventory now. We want to take that 17 units that we would have on hand, subtract it from the remaining back orders, giving us one unit in ending inventory left over. Backlog has now been completely removed. And this portion here takes care of our production plan. The second aspect is looking at costs, which we have over on the right hand side. In the problem, it told us that we have regular wages to be set at $1,000 per worker per month. And in the given problem, it also told us that there was 50 barrels. Each Georgetown worker can produce 50 barrels per month. So if we're going to produce in that first month 567 units, we need how many workers? 567 um, barrels of beer divided by $50 excuse me, not $50, but 50 uh, units per worker. That's 11.34. We cannot have 11.34 people, so we're going to round up to 12, which 12 workers times $1,000 for the wages per month is going to give us a grand total of $12,000 for the month of January. And since the production level remains constant throughout February and March, that also means that our regular wages will also remain constant, giving us wage costs of $12,000 per month for the company. Make a total column, because it'd be nice to know what the total costs are for Georgetown Brewing. It's going to give us $36,000 for the regular wages. <clears throat> there doesn't appear to be any hiring costs here because we started with 12 employees and that remains constant uh, throughout. So I don't even have to put hiring costs. We also did not fire anybody, so I'm not gonna put any firing costs down at this time. But if you notice, we did have uh, backlogs in January and February, which is $25 per unit per month. So $83, or excuse me, 83 barrels times $25 is going to give us $2,075 for the cost of January back orders. And if we apply the same rule for February, 16 backlogged items times $25 per unit is going to give us $400 cost. And as you can see in March, there is none. It appears for this problem, there are no additional costs, uh, no inventory holding costs, etc. Plus, we didn't have any. So let's go ahead and total this up. $2,075 plus the 400 is going to give us 2475 plus the 36000 It would cost Georgetown Brewing Company $38,475 for the production plan. January through March. That concludes this lesson.